and welcome to my channel where I share informative travel guides around the world. Founded by the King Man Rai in 1262 as a part of Lao Thai Lana Kingdom, Chen Rai didn't become a Siamese territory until 1786 and a province until 1910. Do you want to know more about Chen Rai city and its attractions? Watch my next episode! And now, let's go hiking! The next morning upon our arrival to Chen Rai, at 9 o'clock sharply, a friendly Thai guide named Angelo picked us up at our hotel. While hiking, our guide was introducing us some of the fruits that we didn't know they looked like in nature. For example, he showed us pineapple plantations and said they were sold very cheap one baht to one kilo in Chiang Rai. Eh? One baht? Because, because they have a lot. Wow. <laughs> in Europe, one ananas would be how much? I don't know. Two, three euro. Then we hiked deeper into the jungle and a real adventure began. Guys, I loved it so much. It was my first real jungle hike where I walked through the debris and the trails were so natural that were barely seen through covering grass and fallen leaves. The principal area for organized trekking in Chen Rai is in Lam Nam Kok National Park, north of the Kok River, up towards Maya Salon or southwards to Doi Chan. The Mayakok region benefits from the presence of Lahu, Lisu, Aka and Karen settlements in a relatively small area. Listening to birds and insect sounds, I was imagining myself in a movie. However, hiking through a bamboo forest didn't look like an easy walk with friends. This is a real jungle, guys. I've never seen it in my life. The real jungle. Look at this hot passage. They are so steep, and I'm using my bamboo stick to help me to, to walk. So right now, the goal is to go on the top of the mountain for around one hour, and then one or more hour to go down to the village. Uh, so, yeah, well, personal guy is helping us out, like cutting bamboos with a big machete. Robin Hood cup. <laughs> Robin Hood cup. Kind of. Yeah. Funny. This is our guy. Hello. <laughs> you come to Shanghai. <laughs> the weather was extremely humid. Insects were attacking, and hiking till the top of the mountain presumed a lot of endurance. It's not an easy track. Our guy says this is the easiest one, but believe me, you have to experience it. <sighs> he says to still 10 minutes till the top, and then he says, okay, it's easy, we go down. So, I'm not sure. I hope. Anyway, it's really nice to all these bamboo trees around and ants all, all over my skin. <laughs> Finally, 
Finally, after a two hours hike and struggling through grass and bushes, a splendid panorama appeared in front of us. The view was like a reward for all our efforts. It was the beginning of the way to go to the place where we supposed to have lunch, Lisu village. The Lisu Hill tribe is a Tibetan Burman highland tribe originally from southwest China. They drifted into North Thailand from Burma and can now be found in Chiang Rai. Lisu people don't say hello or goodbye. The Lisu Hill tribe speaks a language that belongs to the Lala branch of the Tibetan Burman family. And they also speak some Chinese. At least, I had a little talk with them in Chinese. The people are super friendly, but shy. Occupying villages about 1,000 meters high, they keep livestock and cultivate corn and vegetables. The Lisu Hill tribe grows rice and vegetables for subsistence. At the same time, these villages are relatively close to the market so that the Lisu can trade. Most Lisu live close to water because they believe water has a special power. Unlike other tribes, they don't usually live in stilted houses. Finally, we got to the top of the mountain. As you can see, the view is really splendid, really picturesque. And uh, right now, we're going to have lunch in a local village. And the owner is there, you can hear him. He is uh, frying bamboo shoots for us. The bamboo that actually we got from the forest. So our guide cut some bamboo sprouts for us. And now, so we're going to have that. Okay. Uh, this is actually a bamboo cup. Uh, will be our souvenir. So you can drink like a uh, biscuit in this way, local biscuit, or you can drink uh, just anything. In it. So, yeah. That's a nice place. They cooked a very delicious lunch for us, including a dish with bamboo shoots and bamboo fried rice from the bamboo we previously picked up in the jungle. When we were walking down, my guide told me Lisu kids went to school in another village down the hill, and I was astonished by how it was possible for little kids to walk so long and so hard. However, it turned out they go by car. Our next destination in a hiking trip was Kuei Kaev Waterfall. From one village to another, and now we're gonna go to waterfall. Beautiful. To get there, we had to hike for around 50 minutes through the jungle. Let me tell you something about this waterfall. Hue Kayev waterfall is a small waterfall about 10 meters high with water flowing throughout the year. The area is beautiful and shady with plants and flowers. It is located in Doi Sutap Pui National Park. It is a place where nature is still perfect. Huai Kayev waterfall is assumed that the water in this area may be crystal clear. Therefore, it is called Huai Kayev waterfall. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. 
The origin of Hoikayaf waterfall is from water source in the forest on Doi Sutap Mountain near Ban Kun Chan Kian, flowing down the hills from Monta Tarn waterfall and Hoikayaf waterfall until reaching Hoikayaf village, then finally flowing into the water from the irrigation canals. Just know that at the end of the dry season and beginning of the rainy season, the water level is often very low and the waterfall is sometimes dried out. The best months to have a real flow of water are generally from July to November. Unlike Aravan in Kanchanaburi province, there is no admission fee for this little waterfall. Totally, our hiking tour is supposed to last 5 to 6 hours, but because I got tired earlier, we decided to shorten it and enjoy our time more in hot springs. Therefore, I haven't had a chance to visit Aka and Lahu tribes' villages. However, if you choose to have a one-day hiking tour with coconut stores, the travel company I had my hiking with, you can definitely opt for visiting these two villages. By the way, I totally forgot to tell you, Chen Rai Adventure was my birthday gift, therefore it made my special day unforgettable and full of positive emotions. watching my video guide. If you like it, support me by putting me a like and subscribing my channel. Hit the bell to enable notifications for upcoming videos. Travel guide Angelo from Coconut Tours and real bamboo. He cut the bamboo and uh, just uh, <laughs> made a cup out of it during maybe 30 minutes when we, I, I was uh, eating my lunch in Elisu village. I'd like to give a special thanks to my travel guide Angela who carved this bamboo um, cup for me and uh, the full travel company Coconut Tours. Thanks from Nathalie. It was an amazing trip in Chen Rai.